Hey scientists, grab your lab coats and god rolls as today we're going to explore the different physical properties of matter using measurements, tests, and different observations. Now before we get into our lesson and activity today, let's first talk about our essential questions and which ones we're going to try to answer by the end of today's lesson. Let's look at our essential questions. Remember, our essential questions are questions that help us answer a question by the end of the lesson. That's kind of our goal of what we want to learn. When we're talking about matter, we're talking about these three different types of essential questions. The first is, what is matter? What are some physical properties of matter that we can measure, test, and observe? Why don't you guys read that one with me? Ready? Here we go. What is matter? What are some physical properties of matter that we can measure, test, and observe? I had you guys read that one with me because we're going to talk about those physical properties today. The second one, listen to me read this one. How does matter behave when placed in water? What if it is stirred into water and how does matter react to a magnet? These essential questions focus on a part of matter that we are going to explore more in depth tomorrow. The last questions read, how is matter classified? How can we use physical properties to help us classify? Let's read that one with me. How is matter classified? How can we use physical properties to help us classify? I didn't hear you that time loud enough. Read that one with me again. How is matter classified? How can we use physical properties to help us classify? Nicely done, scientists. We are going to look at the top bullet point and the bottom bullet point today specifically as we explore the physical properties of matter and what those specific things are. Tomorrow, you'll get to do some more exploring and we'll revisit the second bullet point. Let's get into our activity first. When we talk about matter, we aren't talking about what's the matter or asking somebody a question like that. Although that is a way to use the word matter, we're going to use matter in the science definition. Now remember, matter in science terms means that we are looking at three categories to define different figures. Those are solids, liquids, and gases. Now you'll see an example of each of those on the board, but I also have these weird little dots in these little containers. Those little dots represent the different particles of matter. Matter is made up of a bunch of tiny, tiny little atoms, and those atoms are represented in different ways. If you have a solid, all of the little atoms or the dots are really close together. If I were to put a solid object into a cup, it would still hold its size and shape. The liquid one, as you can see, the dots are filling the bottom of the container. The size will, the shape will change, but the size or the amount of water we have won't change. And the same with a gas. If we look at the particles there, we can see they're hopping all over the place. These particles are something that we want to know and remember that matter is not only the different objects, but it's made up of all these tiny little atoms. How do we classify those three different types of matter though? How do we figure out if something is a solid, a liquid, or a gas? What do we need to look at, including those particles, to help us figure out how to classify something into one of these categories of matter. One way we can classify matter is looking at volume. When we talk about volume, we aren't talking about turn up the volume on the music. We're talking about volume as a definition of looking at the size or space that an object takes up. When we're looking at matter, we're trying to see if the volume of an object changes or adapts to the shape it's in. If you look at the example on the screen of the three different water bottles or water beakers, you can see that they're each holding different amount of water. If I tried to pour one amount into another, it wouldn't work because it has too much volume. It's going to take up too much space for those small ones to hold. Think about if you ever poured water from a water bottle into a cup. You have to have the right size cup to make sure the volume of the water is able to fit inside of the cup and not spill over the edge. Another word we're going to come across when we talk about classifying matter into different categories is we're going to talk about conduct. Now, you may have heard conduct as if you look at your classroom, you're conducting yourself excellently. You guys are sitting quietly, you're giving your attention to the screen, and you're listening closely to all the directions and my wonderful voice. 
you're conducting yourself well. But in science, there's a different way that we use the term conduct. We're going to use conduct when we talk about different forms of electricity flowing. To conduct something like electricity means that the electricity is able to go around in one flow. It's able to actually be electric. We will explore different items while we talk about matter, and we will see some of them conduct electricity. Now, this can be a tricky thing to test, so it definitely takes time and patience and to be a good scientist when exploring how to conduct or if objects conduct electricity through their items. What we're going to do when we explore types of matter is going to involve this vocab word, attract. Now, you may have heard this word before. If you might have said, I don't want to attract attention. That means you kind of don't want everyone to look at you or draw attention to yourself and be the center of everyone's focus. In science, when we talk about attract, we're actually talking about it more in terms of magnetism and two items coming together. When we explore matter, we're going to use different types of magnets to help us decide if different items are magnetic or not. These can help us classify the different types of matter and what the objects actually are. We're going to see while we explore different types of matter and classifying them is the word solution. Now, we hear solution in math class sometimes when we talk about finding the solution to a math problem. But in science, it means something a little bit different than a number answer to a math problem. When you're looking for your solution of your experiment or your observations that you are making, you're starting out what's called the scientific method. You start in the beginning by coming up with a problem or a situation that you need to solve. We're trying to figure out what is matter and how to classify the different types of matter. Once we do that, we come up with our hypothesis. Remember, this is another science word that we've heard before. Our hypothesis is our educated guess at what's gonna happen. Our educated guess when looking at different items, we can start to classify them as solids, liquids, or gases. So we take our educated guess and our hypothesis. Then we do our observations, or we explore these things hand on, and we write down what we're seeing. After we have come up with our observations and we collect information and data, we're able to then make a solution. Our solution is basically the answer to our hypothesis or our educated guess. Were you right in your hypothesis or did you miss something and you actually came up with a different solution than you expected? That's okay in science too, as long as you can always back it up with your data. Now it's your turn, scientists. I just told you about some of these words, where we see them in the real world, and then how we're gonna use them in science class specifically. Different words can have multiple meanings. Now, I want you to pause the video. You will see the five different words we talked about today. Before you guys get started exploring matter, let's go over these again. I want you to turn and talk to a partner. Work your way around the list, taking turns. Both of you define the word matter in your own words. Then one of you define solution, someone define volume. Then someone do conduct and someone do attract. Taking turns, doing them all. You'll both do matter and then you'll switch back and forth. After you have done that, sit quietly and wait, and you'll share out as a class. There's different ways to describe these words, but remember, we're looking for how we're going to use them in science class. Good luck, scientists, and I'll see you guys soon.